Hi, my name is Tessa, and I'm on a mission to stop climate change and save all life on our planet. I wanted to make a video summarizing the current state of the climate crisis and why every human needs to be working to stop climate change. Let's first start with a refresher on what climate change is and how it is caused. Climate change, or global warming, is the fast rise of the average temperature of Earth from recent and current releases of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere from human activities. Scientists agree that recent warming trends are proceeding at an unprecedented rate and is a result of human activity. How does global warming occur? Greenhouse gases such as CO2 and methane get released into the atmosphere in large quantities from burning fossil fuels and other human activities. These greenhouse gases trap heat from the sun in the atmosphere that would have otherwise radiated back into space, increasing the overall temperature of the Earth. What are our biggest sources of greenhouse gases? Electricity, heating, and energy use, transportation, agriculture and deforestation, industrial processes, and waste. According to NASA, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere today is 414 parts per million. For comparison, it was 357 parts per million the year I was born, and it was 280 parts per million before the Industrial Revolution started in the late 1700s. According to the International Panel on Climate Change, human activities have caused about 1 degree Celsius of warming above pre-industrial levels and is likely to reach 1.5 degrees Celsius between 2030 and 2052. A global temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels is the widely accepted threshold we must not pass in order to prevent irreparable effects. All right, now I will get into the plethora of impacts and consequences of climate change. I'll try to be concise, but there's a lot to cover. First, Trends in intensity and frequency of some climate and weather extremes have been detected over time spans during which about 0.5 degrees Celsius of global warming occurred. One recent extreme weather event occurred on June 21st, 2020, when a thermometer hit 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit in a Russian town in Siberia, setting a record for the highest temperature documented in the Arctic Circle. From January through May, the average temperature in north-central Siberia was 14 degrees Fahrenheit above average. This kind of warming is scaring scientists, and this area is warming much faster than scientists thought in response to greenhouse gas emissions. This extreme warming in Siberia is leading to rapid meltdown of permafrost and increases in wildfires. In 2011, part of a residential building in Yakutsk, collapsed due to thawing and subsidence of the ground. Last August, more than 4 million hectare acres of forests in Siberia were on fire, according to Greenpeace. Other weather events and natural disasters that have and will be occurring more and more with more intensity and frequency include hurricanes, flooding, forest fires, and droughts. Let me add some humanity and empathy to the conversation and put this into perspective a little bit. This is Constance Akalet. She is a small farmer in eastern Uganda. Her tiny village has been devastated since 2000 by drought, flash flooding, and erratic seasons. She says there are no seasons anymore and agriculture is a gamble. She relies on growing food to feed her family. The poverty levels in her area are rising because of this. Constance is not contributing to climate change, yet she is suffering the greatest. Will they cut the emission so that we can go back to our normal life? Another impact of climate change is sea level rise. Global warming is causing sea level rise in two ways. One, our oceans absorb 90% of excess heat, and when water increases in temperature, it expands. And two, warmer temperatures cause more ice and glaciers to melt, which adds more liquid to the oceans, raising their elevations. Global mean sea level rise is estimated to be from 0.26 to 0.77 meters by 2100, impacting human and ecological systems of small islands, low-lying coastal areas, and deltas. The impacts of sea level rise include flooding, damage to infrastructure, and saltwater intrusion. Saltwater intrusion is the movement of saltwater to freshwater aquifers, compromising drinking water sources. This is a web tool created by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, an agency within the U.S. Department of Commerce. 
that shows visualizations of sea level rise on coastal cities. For example, here is a visualization of Boston, Massachusetts with a sea level rise of 1.8 meters. Most of Boston will be underwater, and that isn't far off. This is the federal government clearly showing this insane impact to our coast, where 39% of the U.S. population resides, while not doing nearly enough or really anything to prevent it. Since we're on the topic of oceans, let's talk about ocean warming and acidification. As our planet warms, the ocean absorbs much of the heat, and we are already seeing warming ocean trends. In addition to this heat, the ocean also absorbs CO2 molecules as more is released into the air. When the ocean absorbs CO2, it reacts with water to form carbonic acid, shifting the pH of the ocean to be more acidic. These two things have irreparable snowballing effects on life on Earth, impacting marine biodiversity, fisheries, ecosystems, and their functions and services to humans. Ocean acidification will amplify the adverse effects of warming impacting the growth, development, calcification, survival, and abundance of a broad range of species from algae to fish. Climate change is increasing risk to fisheries and aquaculture via impacts on the physiology, survivorship, habitat, reproduction, disease incidence, and risk of invasive species. A global fishery model projected a decrease in global annual catch for marine fisheries of about 1.5 million tons for 1.5 degrees C of warming and more than 3 million tons for 2 degrees Celsius of warming. Coral reefs are projected to decline by a further 70 to 90 percent at 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming and over 99 percent at 2 degrees Celsius of warming. This is a very high risk of irreversible marine ecosystem loss. This summer, the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest coral reef system, suffered the worst mass bleaching outbreak ever witnessed, its third coral bleaching event in just five years. For the first time, coral bleaching at regional scales is caused by thermal stress due to spikes in sea temperatures during unusually hot summers. A bleaching is not necessarily fatal, and the coral can regain its color within a few weeks or months and survive. However, if the bleaching is severe or prolonged, it will kill the coral for good. In 2016, more than half of the shallow water corals died on the northern region of the Great Barrier Reef. The gap between recurrent bleaching events is shrinking, hindering a full recovery. Coral reefs are the most biologically diverse and valuable ecosystems on our planet. According to the US EPA, an estimated 25% of all marine life, including over 4,000 species of fish, are dependent on coral reefs. Approximately half a million people globally depend on coral reef ecosystems for food, coastal protection, and income from tourism and fisheries. Coral reefs provide habitat, feeding, spawning, and nursery grounds for over 1 million aquatic species, including commercially harvested fish species. Now that we've covered the major impacts to 70% of our planet, the ocean, let's discuss the biggest impacts to the rest of the 30%. According to the IPCC, of 105,000 species studied, 18% of insects, 16% of plants, and 8% of vertebrates are projected to lose over half of their climatically determined geographic range if global warming of two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels occurred, meaning that percentage of species would only be able to exist in less than half of the areas they do now. Since the 16th century, humans have driven at least 680 vertebrate species to extinction. Okay, so even if you don't care about animals and ecosystems, which you should because human existence relies on biodiversity, there are and will continue to be direct negative impacts of climate change to humans. The IPCC says that climate change will negatively impact health, livelihoods, food security, water supply, human security, and economic growth. The Natural Resources Defense Council estimates the cost of only four impacts of climate change, hurricane damage, real estate losses, energy costs, and water costs will be almost $1.9 trillion annually by 2100. 
you literally cannot argue that stopping climate change now isn't the best financial decision for us. Populations more at risk for consequences of climate change include disadvantaged and vulnerable populations, indigenous peoples, and local communities dependent on agriculture or coastal livelihoods. Climate change will increase heat-related morbidity and mortality, ozone-related mortality, and vector-borne diseases such as malaria and dengue fever. Climate change will reduce yields of maize, rice, wheat, and potentially other cereal crops. Climate change will adversely affect livestock with rising temperatures, changes in feed quality, spread of diseases, and water resource availability. Limiting global warming to one and a half degrees Celsius compared to two degrees Celsius could reduce the number of people both exposed to climate-related risks and susceptible to poverty by up to several hundred million by 2050. But wait, there's more. We're going to jump back into a couple sciencey things and talk about some additional sneaky ways that climate change is advanced. First are through refrigerants like chlorofluorocarbons and hydrochlorofluorocarbons. These compounds are released when we use refrigerators and air conditioning. They have a global warming potential that can range up to tens of thousands, meaning they trap tens of thousands times more heat than the same amount of CO2. Also, CFCs do not get destroyed in the atmosphere and instead catalyze the reaction of ozone into O2, depleting our ozone layer. Remember when we used to care about our ozone layer? Luckily, CFCs are being widely phased out and replaced with HCFCs now. HCFCs do not harm the ozone layer as much as CFCs, but they do have powerful greenhouse gas effects. The second sneaky way that climate change is advancing behind our backs is through negative feedback loops. As the earth warm, large quantities of permafrost and ice are melting, releasing trapped pockets of methane and other greenhouse gases into the air. Keep in mind that methane is 28 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than CO2. Another big methane source discovered recently are wetlands. Wetlands account for approximately 30% of all methane emissions. As the earth continues to warm, more methane will be released from these wetlands. We have all the technology and solutions to function as a net zero CO2 world, but unfortunately, politics and capitalism prevent and slow down these solutions from being widely used. And that's because these systems only value money and the bottom line. Future existential threats like climate change do not have any sway over capitalist decisions because if you aren't going to make the most amount of money now, then it's not going to happen. But we need to break through these systems and realize that our existence and well-being on our planet matters more than money and convenience and luxuries. We will not have the luxury to enjoy the fruits of money and status if we do not exist. To me, it is not a difficult debate. So what should you do? Start with your own life. The biggest impacts an individual can have are eating less animal products, buying less stuff, and driving and flying less. Focus on those three things. But we need change at every level, at the individual level, at the community level, state, federal, global level. And we need as many people as possible working for that change as far up as they can go. Join these organizations to help fight climate change. Get political. Use your voice and speak up. Take these political actions in your community. I also urge you to fight for change at your work. If you see something that is inefficient or wasteful, speak up, offer a solution. If you disagree with the practice your company does because it contributes greatly to climate change, speak up and offer a solution. This is no longer the time to be silent, indentured servants at work afraid of speaking up. We need more conversations at work that remind us that we're humans and there are other things to value in this world besides money. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you want to see more videos on how you can join the fight and be part of the solution, hit subscribe. I will be posting more videos on climate activism and sustainable living, so look out for those in the future. I hope you stay happy, healthy, and safe, and I'll see you next time.